Hey, Yins. It's been a while. I missed you. Let's jump right back in it with some bass, and this time with some compression. This video, we're going to talk about recording bass guitar, or tracking, if you will, using hardware compressors. Compression is very important with the sound of bass guitar, both in a live setting and recording. It's common to always use at least a little bit of a compression in both of these circumstances, but for recording especially so, you're going to have usually multiple compressors in your mixing stage, but a lot of people also like to record into a compressor during the recording stage. That's the part that we're going to focus on today. I'm actually going to do a comparison of four different compressors we have here at Firecade Studios, so you'll be able to hear the differences between all four of them. Now, normally for a comparison video, I would record the part once and then use a reamping device to play it back through each individual compressor separately. That way it's a fair, if you will, comparison of all of them. But because we're talking about tracking, the feel of playing into the compressor is very important. So I'm going to play it live for each compressor. There might be slight variations, but again, it's worth the trade-off because it really is all about the player and how they feel while using the compressor. I'm also not going to use multiple settings for each individual compressor. I'm going to keep each compressor to one main suggested setting, if you will. I'm also going to try to make them sound in their own unique kind of way. In other words, I don't want to set up the germanium compressor so that it sounds and behaves just like my Dragon Compressor. The whole idea here is to give you different kinds of flavors. Okay, for those of you who just want to hear the difference between them, I'm going to set up some chapters so you can just jump back to back between the different examples. Then after that, I'm going to give a short breakdown of my thoughts. But for those of you gearheads who are interested in the signal chain, let's go through that. I'm going to use my baby, an ESP LTD B204, circa mid 90s. I actually got this bass shortly after I started playing bass guitar. Yes, I've been playing for over 20 years. This line has changed a little over the years, and I hate to say it, but they don't quite make them like they used to. This one has two EMG HZ passive pickups and also an active EQ. This kind of gives it almost of an active feel. It's just unique, buttery smooth. I love this bass mainly because I've been playing it for nearly three decades. For a preamp, I'm going to go direct into a Universal Audio 610 tube preamplifier. I'm gonna use the high z input, also known as the instrument input or the direct input. I'm going to use this for every one of the examples so we can compare them all more or less equally. First up, I'm going to use a T4 optical compressor based on the LA2A by Universal Audio. This is probably one of the most famous compressors. It's been used on countless recording for many, many decades. In this case, it's the second half of the LA610 by Universal Audio. So I'm using the 610 preamp with its proud partner, if you will, the LA2A compressor. This compressor only has a gain reduction and a peak knob, meaning you cannot choose the attack or the release. This actually simplifies things, but it does kind of limit your speed. I'm going for about 5 to 7 dB of gain reduction on this. Next up is the Slate Pro Audio Dragon. This is based on the 1176 compressor, another famous and well-used, well-heard compressor from Universal Audio. Slade and his team did a great job of both emulating it and coming up with some modern features to really bring it into the modern era, which is something I really, really like here. I'm going to do a 4 to 1 ratio with the attack at about 3 o'clock and the release at 9 o'clock. 
and I'm also going to engage the Bite knob. This is actually the recommended rock base setting in the Slate Dragon manual. Now the Bite setting along with like the Sheen and the Vintage switches kind of give it a different characteristic, almost kind of like an EQ. They kind of change the flavor of the compressor, if you will, beyond just doing a compression. This also has a mix knob, which is fantastic if you want to do parallel compression. But for this instance, we're just going to stick to the straight, fully wet signal. Now, this is an FET compressor, meaning in general, it's very fast. So that's why I don't have it on quite the fastest signal. Although I could if I really wanted to chomp down on them transients, but that is not what I'm going for here. I'm going to go for about 5 to 8 dB of compression. Next up is a very versatile compressor, the Chandler Limited Germanium Compressor. This compressor can behave very differently depending on where you set the comp curve knob. Again, I'm going to use a suggested base setting from the manual. So it's going to be the germ medium setting, an attack of two and a release of one. So more on the faster side for this compressor, but it's still not going to be quite as fast as the Dragon. I also want to point out that the germanium compressor is not actually modeled after any specific compressor. They designed it after practical studio use to come up with a design that was useful but not necessarily emulating a specific unit. Also going to engage the dirty mode, just meaning it kind of gives it a little more grit and character when it does do the compression. This also has a mix knob, which is handy, but again, we're going to leave it fully wet. There's also a germanium drive and a feedback knob, which is common on all the germanium units from Chandler. This more or less acts like an EQ and give it more flavor depending on where you have these set. I have them both set to five. That's the most neutral sending. Something to note here is that these units do not use a VU meter. It can be kind of confusing. I'm shooting for about minus five reduction, sort of, on this gauge. They don't behave like a normal VU meter. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell. Over the years I've gotten used to it and kind of know what I kind of reaction I want to get from it. So it's just hard to describe. Again, it's different from the VU meter. Quick history lesson for you. The VU meter or volume unit meter was developed in 1939 by Bell Telephone in collaboration with CBS and NBC as a way to standardize volume on broadcasting. It is a standardized meter, meaning a VU meter on one piece of gear and a VU meter on another piece of gear should give the same exact actual output, if you will. An issue with this is that because it is such a standardized system, they are more expensive to include in your product. So if you were to develop, say, your own standard, it could be a cheaper alternative. So even if it looks like a VU meter, if it does not have that capital V, that capital U on it, chances are it is not a standard VU meter. So therefore it can have a slightly different response. Think back to the proprietary TT Bantam design. See my past video on cables. Last but certainly not least is the Retro Instruments STA level. Sta level? Stay level? Won't you stay? Anyways, it's based on the Gates STA level, which was a leveling amplifier used in broadcast production in the late 50s and 60s. This thing is just crazy. It's unlike any other compressor I've ever used. I think there's like 12 different tubes in the back. This is another compressor with a simplistic design. There's an input and output knob, a mode switch, and a recovery time switch. We're going to use the next to fastest recovery time. So it's going to be faster, but not FET faster. The mode switch affects attack time, plus some other characteristics within the whole design of the comp. I'm going to use the double setting. And I know I said I was only going to use one setting for each comp, but the triple setting on this just does something very different to the sound. It's almost like a tube distortion kind of effect. So I wanted to throw that in there just so you can get to hear it. This is another compressor that does not have a standard VU meter, although it kind of looks like it. And yet again, it's one that kind of acts weird. 
you might do what it says to be like 20 or 30 gain reduction, but it doesn't really sound or act like that. I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's one of those ones where you just kind of kind of get used to it and really decide what you like and what it's doing. In this case, I think I'm shooting for somewhere around minus 10 according to that scale. Okay, let's get to slapping the bass, which I'm actually totally not going to do because I cannot slap bass. I'm going to play the bass nicely, not too nicely, like medium kind of play, you know? Okay, hope you like listening to different examples. Now it's hard to really demonstrate just from about a 20 second clip how different these feel. Because remember, this is all about the feel more than anything. And I also want to note that it really depends on the style, both of the player and the material. I'm going to want different kind of compression results, whether I'm playing funk or hip hop compared to my metal or rock or even a jazz type client that I'm playing for. And even within those genres, I might want different results depending on what kind of sound I'm going for that day. I actually spent a lot more time with each one of these compressors over the years, certainly, but while making this video, I just didn't want to record, you know, 30 minutes of me playing around with each one of the compressors to really get a feel for it. So that's why I'm going to summarize my results. All right, and the winner is...
you guys. Seriously, thanks for watching. Glad you're here. If I really had to pick an overall winner though, it probably would be the LA610. Or more specifically, the LA2A half of the LA610 channel strip that I have here in the studio. But I'm kind of biased because I've been using this to track bass for about 15 years now, so it's been my go-to for a while. And that more simplistic style is actually kind of more freeing in a way. I'm not having to sit there and worrying about my attack settings or my release settings. I just set it up and go. That's why it's used in a ton of recordings, both for bass, guitar, and vocals. It works very well in the settings that it naturally has, if you will, lend itself great for those two instruments. Now the Dragon, just being in its nature an 1176 clone, will handle the transients better. So if you're playing kind of some more staccato kind of bass, but you want to clamp it down a little bit, then that I think would be kind of your go-to for that. And with all those character knobs, you can really change up the sound as you want to. The Chandler, as you can hear, doesn't quite do as much compression. I think that has to do with it a little slower and that germ medium setting kind of has a softer knee. So it is pretty good for rounding out the sound. And if you notice, it also gives it more of a boom to it, almost like a low mid end bump. And that's just kind of the nature of all those Chandler germanium products in general. Wade and the gang over there have a knack for making these units that if you run a signal through them, even if you're not changing it, like not doing a compression, not doing an EQ, just running something through this germanium unit makes it sound better. <laughs> Plus I should also mention that if you use different settings for the comp curve, it completely transforms the compressor. It's kind of complicated, um, but in a way, if you play around with it, I think it's a go-to comp. If you just want to smooth it out a little bit, it's great for that sort of thing. Now the retro, um, I really love that on the double setting. It's right up there with the LA-2A sound. Um, I was really digging it. In a way, I might start using that more when I'm tracking. I think the only reason I don't use it as much now is because it is always on my vocal chain. It is fantastic for that. And I only own one of them. They are really expensive. So if I had two of them, I would definitely be using all two of them all the time, every day in the studio. Now the triple setting, I included that because I just wanted you to hear just the growl, the grumble, the almost distorted effect that it gives it. It's something really neat. And if you're going for that characteristic, uh, by all means, that's the way to get it. So there you have it. Everything is great. <laughs> Look, it really is about what you're going for, what your end product wants to be, and how comfortable you are while you're playing it. Essentially, if you have a nice hardware compressor, you're gonna be happy with it. Just spend some time at it and really figure out kind of the results you're going for. If you want to get rid of those transients, go for something faster like the Dragon or any sort of 1176 style. Smoother and easier to dial in, go with an optical compressor like the LA610 or the Retro, although I don't, really think the retro is optical. I actually have no idea what type of compressor it is. That's terrible. I really want to do a whole video on it, so stay tuned. So grab an instrument, grab some comps, and just have at it. Have some fun tracking. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. So until next time, happy tracking.